for me, having some details about how an anarchistic society would work and did work uh, made me a lot more comfortable with anarchy, not because I wanted every I dotted and every T crossed, but because having real life examples made it solidify in my mind that this is what actually happens. The chaos of the Wild West is largely a Hollywood myth. The anarchist West was more peaceful than the East because crime and violence wasn't subsidized. Without government, how was land claimed and property rights dealt with? Well, um, New Frontier Land was technically owned by the federal government in the same way that God owns land in a theocracy. The settlers were supposedly trespassers and so had to devise their own way of defining and protecting property rights. This was done through land clubs or claim associations. Each claim association uh, had its own constitution and laws uh, specifying what you had to do to own land. Uh, often it was a combination of claiming and improving the land. You had to go out there and put stakes in the ground to show your claim, and then you had to have so many improvements uh, built up on your land to justify the claim. Uh, maybe it was, you know, f for so many acres you had to have this many improvements or, or something like that. Uh, this was so to prevent speculation, which was just like one guy registering all the land and have the claim, associ claim association enforce his claims which he could then sell back to anyone who wanted to actually use the land uh, at a monopoly rate. Associations had constitutions and bylaws and stuff that you signed on to when you registered your claim. The associations also resolved disputes either through their own courts or through a third party court. Most disputes were resolved by an association court and abided by both parties, with the primary enforcement mechanism being that everyone who signed onto the association agreed to blackball anyone who who broke the association's laws or failed to abide, abide by an association court ruling or claim jumpers who didn't even register their land with the claim association and were uh, kind of being like free riders and uh, theoretically the claim association would then use violence if the negative enforcement failed but this was exceedingly rare because what would be the point of jumping a claim uh, if everyone around you wouldn't even let let you pass their territory to go to town. Uh, everyone signed on that they wouldn't trade or deal or anything with someone who had uh, jumped a claim or or uh, shirked a ruling. So it was impossible. You'd be an economic pariah. So uh, going against the association ruling and going against association rules were um, was very rare because of that. The associations were paid for with registration fee or subscription fee or combination and were prevented from charging monopoly rates or be becoming tyrannical uh, because of competition with other claim associations. So uh, abuse by the claim associations and crappy laws and shit rulings were prevented because they had to compete with other claim associations. Cattlemen associations also formed. Uh, as the frontier became more crowded, you started to have problems with cattle thieves, with uh, rustlers. So ranchers got together to protect themselves from the rustlers. They hired expert gunmen as cattle detectives to recover stolen cattle. And how they recovered the stolen cattle? Well, you know. Other large-scale associations, like the Rocky Mountain Detective Association and Anti-Horse Thief Associations, were uh, information-providing services and coordination services, and rarely provided on-the-spot enforcement of the private rules. So you had a whole private network emerge just to stop cattle thieves. Uh, most hired gunmen worked for the legitimate ranchers because they had the most money and could guarantee long-term employment, whereas the, whereas the rustlers really couldn't. Uh, some of the individual gunmen did drift in and out of a life of crime and sometimes did form loose criminal associations, but these associations did not seem to be encouraged uh, by the market form of peacekeeping, and in fact seemed to be dealt with more quickly and more severely under private property protective associations than under government organization. You didn't have any real economies of scale that come with trafficking in, quote, illegal, close quote, substances such as drugs or alcohol. And since everyone and his mom and his dog had a gun, uh, you had to be pretty matrix to pull anything off. And most criminals ended up to be becoming uh, fairly dead. Mining companies on the frontier had their own laws as well, and constitutions and courts. Company constitutions often specified arrangements for payments to be used for caring for sick and unfortunate, rules for personal conduct and fines which could be imposed for misconduct. If a dispute over a company court ruling was severe enough, 
I mean, there were enough people who were pissed off at the court ruling. The company would then uh, simply divide a single district into multiple districts, and each district would have its would have the new law. And so people had a degree of choice in the law they lived under in a way that you just don't have with the government. Moreover, uh, the services of trained lawyer, lawyers were not welcomed in many of the camps, and uh, even forbidden in districts such as the Union Mining District. Resolved that no lawyer be permitted to practice law in this district under penalty of not more than fifty nor less than twenty lashes, and he forever be banished from this district. Uh, the district was the unit of political organization in many regions long after the creation of the state, uh, which was always corrupt and ineffective at settling disputes and providing protection. Wagon trains made similar preparations, realizing that there would be no laws in the area they were going into. Most wagon trade settlement companies created their own contracts uh, with clearly defined rules, often with the Constitution. This prairie law was similar to sea law. Uh, there were laws regarding property rights, chore duty, guard duty, uh, even laws about how the community would be built up once the de destination was reached. Property rights were paramount. Indeed, it is no exaggeration to say that the emigrants who traveled America's overland trail gave little thought to solving problems with violence or theft because everyone had a gun. We know that some ate flesh of dead oxen or beef with maggots while surrounded by healthy animals they could have shot. This is because everyone, his mom and his dog, had a gun, and so enforcement of property rights was much more direct and immediate than in a status society, which may or may not protect property rights at all and, and could throw you in jail for taking matters into your own hands. Now, there were some flare-ups. Uh, three that come to mind are the Johnson County War in Wyoming, the Regulator-Moderator War in Shelby, Texas, in Shelby County, Texas, and the Utah War in Utah. Uh, the Regulator-Moderator War was between 1839 and 1844 and resulted in 18 deaths and many more ruinings, and given the traditional 3 to 1 ratio in combat, we can uh, estimate about 54 uh, woundings or maimings. Uh, this was a result of, quote, the moderators, close quote, issuing phony land deeds and, ste and stealing livestock while claiming to be vigilantes. Um, they were opposed by, quote, the regulators, close quote, um, who organized under the pretense that they were going to stop the moderators, but they were, of course, just as bad. The war eventually devolved into just a series of uh, individual and family feuds. Uh, eventually, Sam Houston sent in 16 troops and to... Uh, and then the, and that quickly stopped the fighting. Now, why did you have this chaos ensue in Texas, but not in some place like Nebraska that was completely lawless? Well, you didn't have claim associations in Texas. You supposedly had a government law, and land was bought from this government. Uh, because of this, you could easily forge a, a deed. See, uh, if you try to forge a deed from a claim association, uh, you could just take it to the pri to their private court and they would go through their records and see that it was indeed forged and everyone around would blackball you if you still held onto the land that you stole. So the private claim association rendered land worthless to anyone except the registered owner. This is not the case in government. If someone forges a deed, uh, you have to take it to a local government court, which of course doesn't have the records, and of course state courts take ages to get anything done, and of course the enforcement arm of the government may or may not be in your area, okay? Whereas private enforcement agencies are typically closer to the fight because they have skin in the game. Uh, also, nobody signed a contract with the government saying that they would blackball land thieves. And so land thieves could use government land. They can't use um, land they registered from a uh, uh, forgery, forged land they took from a uh, claim agencies claim association. So because they didn't adequately address the problem of property rights and instead fell back on the non-answer of the government, uh, you had a feud which the government eventually responded to in Texas uh, five years later. Yeah. Uh, the Utah War. Brigham Young, the governor of the Utah Territory, wanted to make polygamy legal as per Mormon practice. He was able to do so because back east, Congress had adopted popular sovereignty. Uh, popular sovereignty was used to settle the slavery issue. Territories could make slavery laws as they saw fit, uh, preventing any additional free or slave states from entering the Union. Okay, that's why they had it. and Because they didn't want to have an imbalance which would lead to a breakup of the, of the Union, which would lead to a civil war. 
unfortunately the popular sovereignty of utah was pro-polygamy which the u.s federal government sought to quash uh, president buchanan <laughs> sent uh, 2,500 troops to depose Brigham Young and appoint some new government who was not elected or anything. Uh, so, so much for liberty. Of course, the government troops got their nose bloodied in a few battles, and they got the hell out of there, and then to save face, Congress said, well, uh, it's okay, you can do it, we changed our mind. But of course, they just got their butt beats. That's what really happened. Uh, the troops were probably anti-polygamy, uh, but weren't about to die in the middle of a desert fighting a guerrilla war against religious fanatics over it. The Johnson County War was similar to the Regulator Moderator War. A group of cattle cooperatives threw together an expedition of 50 men to go to Johnson County and wipe out what they claimed were cattle rustlers, although there is circumstantial evidence that sheds doubt on this claim. At the time, there was a territory government in Wyoming which gave the green light on the campaign. At first, some guys in uh, Johnson County appealed to the territory government for assistance, but of course the territory government had already okayed the massacre, probably because they had received bribes. And so Johnson County was on its own. And so what they did is they formed up a militia of about 300 and held up the invaders in some ranch. News that the invasion of, had failed reached the territory government, which only then telegrammed the Secretary of War who ordered uh, federal troops in the area to save the 50 men who were out to kill a bunch of people they just claimed were stealing cattle. Note, there was no tri trial, there was no due process, there was no uh, third-party investigation. It was just a bunch of guys say, they're stealing cattle, and the territory government said, okay, go kill them. And when they went to kill them, and then when they failed, only then, only then when they failed, did the territory government appeal to the federal government to bail these guys out. Absolutely sickening. And of course, the men they claimed uh, were stealing cattle from them also happened to be their competitors and also uh, were trying to set up a, uh, another um, um, cattle conglomerate. Um, you know, I look at the situation and I say, let the Johnson County militia kill the hell out of those guys. They should have just killed the hell out of those guys. The feds never should have showed up. If I, you know... If I was the commander of those federal troops who showed up uh, at the situation, uh, I would have just let them kill the hell out of them and then say, we showed up too late. Okay, the feds came in and saved those guys from a very well-deserved fate. But, you know, instead of creating associations to protect property and keeping each other in check, the people of Wyoming fell back on the non-answer of government. And since government officials have no skin in the game, uh, they have very little incentive in actually protecting property rights and so shit like this is what happens you are not kept safe by higher power there is no higher power looking out for you you are kept safe by people who have an interest to keep you and your possessions safe people will keep you safe to the degree that they have an interest in keeping you safe government police will keep you safe because if they are grossly negligent they will be fired but if they are just kinda crappy they will stay around Thus, government police are just kind of crappy. They protect you to the degree that it is in their self-interest to protect you. You can either recognize this fact that people respond to incentives and build your associations accordingly. You can live in a world of fantasy where strangers actually give a shit about you, or you can live in the real world where you recognize that they don't and try to build a humane society which recognizes this cold fact. Ignoring it is not cruel, and promoting fantasy is not nice, because war is the price of fantasy.